Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals of the principles of training. We will help you understand the three key principles of training, how adaptation occurs, and the different types of adaptations achieved through training. Let's get started. There are three key principles of training. Overload is where a stimulus of sufficient strength, duration and frequency forces an organism to change and adapt. Variation is the manipulation of various training variables. And specificity, which describes how the body will adapt to the specific demands that are placed on it. All of these principles help promote adaptation, which is the human body's ability to respond and change to various exercise stimuli. Generally speaking, if stimulus progressively increase, then we would expect adaptation to occur and performance to increase. If there is not enough stimulus, then we would expect performance to plateau or start to decrease. And if there is too much stimulus, then there is a risk of male adaptation, which could also decrease performance levels. The general adaptation syndrome is how the body responds and adapts to stress. The alarm reaction stage is the initial reactor to the stressor. The resistance development stage is when the body adapts in order to resist the stress more efficiently. And the exhaustive stage, which is when persistent application of stress will exhaust or distress the system. There are various types of adaptations that can occur through training. Common neuromuscular adaptations include increased recruitment of motor units, increased motor unit firing rate, increased muscle hypertrophy, and increased mitochondria efficiency. Common metabolic adaptations include increased ATP and PC stores, increased glycogen store capacity, increased ability to remove lactic acid, and increased efficiency of all energy systems. And common cardiorespiratory adaptations include increased lung volume, increased capillary density, increased lactate threshold, and increased VO2 max. It is also important to understand the following concepts in order to maximise the fundamental training principles. The length-tension relationship is the resting length of a muscle and the tension the muscle can produce at this resting length. There is an optimal muscle length at which actin and myosin filaments in the sarcomere have the greatest overlap. This means the myosin can make the maximum amount of connections with actin, resulting in the potential to produce maximal force. Lengthening or shortening a muscle beyond this point will reduce the amount of connection between the actin and myosin, and therefore reduce its force output. The force-velocity curve is the inverse relationship between force and velocity. As the velocity of a concentric contraction increases, its ability to produce force decreases. A one repetition max, for example, will produce the greatest amount of force, but minimal velocity, whereas a maximal velocity movement will produce minimal force. Muscles do not work in isolation to produce movement. A force-couple relationship are groups of muscles that move together to produce movement around a joint. Each muscle in a force-couple has a different attachment site, pulls in different angles, and creates a different force on the joint, but all work together to produce movement. For example, the upper, middle, and lower trapezius, along with the serratus anterior, all work together to rotate the scapula upwards. Rate of force production is quite simply how fast an individual can develop force. Two individuals may be able to produce the exact same amount of force, but the difference between winning and losing could be determined by which individual can generate the force the quickest. 
One aspect that can affect the rate of force production is the stretch shortening cycle. This is the body's built-in spring-like mechanism that reacts quickly after an eccentric contraction or lengthening of the muscle to produce a concentric contraction and direct the force in the appropriate direction. A perfect example of this in action occurs during a depth jump. As the individual begins to land, the muscle lengthens, which is known as the eccentric phase. When the individual is at the bottom of the landing, the muscles are loaded, which is known as the amortization phase. And as the individual explodes back up, the muscles fire, which is known as the concentric phase. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.